their legal non-conforming, that status wouldn't change. So, um, does that mean that, let's say, if in the future my children inherit the land, would they also inherit the opportunity of uh, remaining within those yeah, lines of rural agriculture? What they inherit really is the ability to potentially subdivide it more. <laughs> So how would, we, how would we know for sure that we would that this would apply to us? Like I know that you're saying you're telling this to us verbally today, but how would we know in writing? When could we find this? Oh, I can I can analyze it for you. Speak with Kerry, the zoning official. I'll look at your property, see if you have animals, and we can memorialize that. That's well, fine. Right. So when you're talking about subdividing, I'm not sure what what that means in relation to us. What would that uh, be? Your current zoning is RA65. 65,000 square foot lot size requirement should you want to develop your property. You need to create a block of land that's 65,000 square feet in size and has, I think it's 200 feet of frontage. If you go down to the R40, you only have to have 40,000 square feet size and only 150 feet of frontage. So it gives you more rights as a, as a landowner to potentially develop your property. But you seem to be the type that you like the rural character, you kind of go the other way. It doesn't have, yeah, no. It's, it doesn't have to change. It right. Just has the opportunity. Exactly. You're not mandated to do anything. You can keep your animals. You're not required to subdivide. That's only if you or your children want to try to do that. Correct. And then how does that affect their property in terms of taxes? Do they for what? Yeah, again, I explained that. If you have a property that could potentially be subdivided, there is a possibility your taxes would go up. But I'd have to really look at your property. I, off the top of my head, I can tell you, just looking at it, a lot of these frontage lots, if they develop, you'd have to build a road to create frontage in this area. It's very unlikely that your assessment's going to change. Tom, I'm glad you said that. Yes. You're looking at this this map up here. Your property runs deep, but it's right. narrow. Right. And right now, you probably have 200 linear feet frontage. But if you switch over to a lower uh, density, you build 150 foot frontage, you're not going to be able to do much over there. So uh, I'm kind of on your side on this one. I certainly, I, I, I don't condone this. What do your neighbors think, you know? Uh, I really don't, I dare speak for my neighbors. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe you should have some dialogue with your neighbors and get their favors, because we will have this hearing again. And if your neighbors come in in the same mindset that you are, uh, I think it's difficult for a council to pass any changes over there. I respect land use, I mean, yours if you want it, that's, that's well, I just, I just, quite frankly, I just consider that, uh, you know, within Slatersville, there aren't many rural agricultural areas, and I, I, I just consider a piece of history so close to downtown Slatersville, and uh, I, I just think it's something to be preserved uh, and to be valued just for its possible historic value. I'm not saying that uh, it will have any anything directly related to history, but just by the fact that it is rural agricultural, how many of those pieces of the land are, are around uh, Slatersville right now? You know what you can do? We can go on Spring Avenue and ask the folks in North Province what they thought about zone changes. Uh, because that used to be all agricultural back there as well. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not fighting, I'm not fighting development, but at some point we have to preserve. Yeah, we have to preserve. Uh, not to mention that uh, you know the more development that takes place, I mean, we keep seeing, I mean, Turkey is just roaming, being displaced, and, and deer, and uh, no one is advocating for that. You know, I mean, you're very right in what you're saying. What pops in my mind here is, is that the town's always going to be growing. It has to grow, really. That's the model upon which our tax system is really predicated. So I have a map here in the front that is a, a gross simplization of it, but there's something called a transect planning language, urban transect. It's, it's a graduated either increase or decrease in zoning density depending on how you look at it, right? If you're going towards a city or urban center, you would generally see an increase in the density. That's kind of what this is. This is adjacent to an RU20. So the thinking was you go from the RS65 to maybe the R, RS40. This is adjacent to a really more dense uh, village being approach is R, RU20. And so there's that gradual transect of zoning there. Try to accommodate density and growth without without compromising the rural character that you're effectively talking about town-wide. That's why I point to that map that I have. Take a look at it when you walk back. Two-thirds of the town in the south and west is, is, for the most part, rural suburban. For that intention to keep it that way, like you say, you just happen to live in an area that's 
close to him within these villages where you might see the small changes. But Not only really that, there's a quarry, an old quarry right behind our property, and animals go there to drink, and you know, they coexist in that area, uh, dragonflies, I mean, you name it. Uh, it's, I think it's a very important area that we need, we, need, we should uh, take a close look at. The thing is, if you're going to increase density as a municipality, this goes for any of them. You generally try to do it adjacent to areas that are already dense. So you're kind of preserving the rural character of the larger part of town, which is again, yeah, gross and simplified on the map there. Well, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, I was just going to say the second reading is in effect this second. They, the hearings continue. I'll be here with this. I don't know. If, it depends on how many people show up. I guess I could go through it again or not. We'll play it by ear. Yeah, but do you need two weeks' time, four weeks' time? Oh, I, I'm ready. I can do it tomorrow. And it's not going to change. You know, not, it has been substantial input, yeah. yeah I, the two weeks is fine. But the thing is, there may be one input uh, as this. Sure. Everybody's aware of it, but as this gains traction among neighbors and people talking, it, it may have a different turn on the next time. I, I, I would like to say that two weeks may be too short of a time period. That's just my thought. Yeah. Um, but we could learn it that night, though, too. That's what's going to happen. Well, we could always continue that night again. We right. don't necessarily have to close it. Okay. So is there a motion to continue this public hearing to April 1st, 2019? So by Mrs. Zelensky. Is there a second? Second. By Mr. Oji. Any other discussion? Proposal? Mrs. Bottomo? Yes. Mrs. O'Hara? Yes. Mr. Ogier? Yes. Mr. Zelensky? Yes. Mr. Badnang? Yes. This, this makes it a first reading. Yeah. That's correct. No, no action taken. No action. First reading. 